Hey everybody, Eagle Run 2-3 here. Uh, pardon the mess here on the workbench. We're, <laughs> we're in the middle of a lot of different projects here. And if you didn't see, in my last video, we melted our bacon press and made a mess of our Blackstone grill. We're gonna be redoing this here coming up in a future video. But we need to talk about buckets. Uh, one of the last videos I made has over 15,000 views already. Super thank you if you watched that. Appreciate it. It's got a ton of comments too. And there's several things that I would like to address um, quickly here in this video. Number one, we have 240 new subscribers in the last 20 days. And most of those are more like in the last 10 days, which is really awesome. And we blew right past 4,000 subscribers. Um, you guys actually caught me quite a bit off guard because I have a 4,000 subscriber giveaway and here we are coming up on 4,300 subs. So I don't know how quickly we're going to get to 5,000. That would be really awesome, but I'm going to go ahead and do a giveaway coming up here very soon. So make sure you're subscribed because, um, 95% of my views are unsubscribed viewers. Okay. A couple things to talk about here. General preparedness. I am not, I, I call myself a prepper because that's really the best term that exists. I am not a uh, doomsday prepper per se. Um, I am a general family prepared guy. I have a family, um, we have some extra things and people tend to call that a prepper. Uh, I have a very um, practical approach to what I do and I hope that came across in that video. Uh, that video was not to show the extent of all of my preps. That was a top off video. And I think I said that in the initial uh, part of the video was, hey, we're topping off some things. We went to the store in one trip, spent, you know, 7,500 bucks and picked up some things to just add to our collection. That wasn't everything that I have. Some people in the comments were like, this guy's not prepped because he's not going to last a week with that. You're right. What I bought that day wouldn't last a week. 100% correct. Um, next, let's talk about buckets. So I, sh I showed you the tractor supply buckets. We don't have a fleet farm or a farm and tack or any, some of those regional stores here in Texas. We do have tractor supply and that's where I got those buckets. I I'm not convinced right now that buckets are really even the best way to store things. Um, they're round, which is difficult to store and stack. They don't, they, they waste a lot of space and they, uh, they're getting really expensive. If you have a, if you buy a $4 bucket and a $10 lid, you're looking at a $15 storage option. And I think there's better things out there, but they are super handy and you probably need some. I don't know that you want to spend that kind of money to store all of your stuff, but you got to have some buckets. They're easy to move. Um, they do stack, uh, but you know, there are some limitations when you put them next to each other. There's just a lot of wasted space. Uh, this is an old paint bucket. I have several of these because uh, we painted recently and this is not, you know, a food safe one because it had paint in it. But depending on what you're putting in there, you don't need food safe. If you're buying them, I would go ahead and get food safe. Don't get caught up on the food safe part because unless you're storing, like, unless it had like a chemical in it, that's, that's all you're trying to stay away from is if it would... Like if there was some sort of toxic acid stored in this bucket, you don't want to dump your beans right in there. Make sense? Now, for the most part, I didn't mention this at all because we weren't really talking about how I was storing things. I just kind of mentioned that I bought some buckets. You you can get Mylar bags. You can vacuum seal them. Um, I recommend doing not just one big Mylar bag in here, but fitting separate ones in there. And you can even vacuum seal them in place so that they can form to the shape of the bucket. We can talk more about that later if we want to. There were some great ideas in the comments on that last video if you want to scroll through there and see um, see what you can find. But anyway, that's, that's what I have to say about buckets. Um, a lot of people also said, hey, I work at a place that has buckets. If you work at a place that has buckets, you need to grab those out of the trash and you need to list those puppies on, uh, on Marketplace or Craigslist because you can definitely get two to five bucks for a bucket um, from people who need buckets because... Um, I'm not going to, I'm not going to track down buckets and go ask people for free. Um, I'm a small business owner. I'm a busy guy, three bucks for a bucket. I can afford that. I'm going to buy my buckets, but there are free and cheaper options out there. Definitely more about rice and beans. I kind of mentioned that I was worried about rice and beans, like expiring. Uh, they don't really expire. If you store them in a cool, dry place, they're, they're going to last a long time, 10, 15 years. I don't know. Um, they're going to last a long time. Everything at the grocery store has to have an expiration date on it. Uh, that's just kind of the way that that system is set up. But most of the things don't truly expire on that date anyway. So 
you, you just kind of, you know, use your best judgment on some of that stuff. Um, I also was called a scaremonger. Um, I ended up talking to that guy in the comments and I think I was able to convince him that I'm not scaremongering, but, um, I'm not scared. Um, I have Jesus in my heart and a shotgun by my side. So we, we're not scared of anything. Um, I think the supply chain is concerning and I'm worried about the long term of that or the short, short term of that and not having, you know, food for my family. Is that a real concern? It is to me and I'm spending a little bit of time and effort on it. I mean, that's kind of where I leave that. Um, there are significant, definite things that you can point to in the trucking and shipping industry right now. We have very real concerns, and I'm not really going to go into that in this video because it probably deserves its own video. There's a lot of people making content about what's happening. Truck drivers are, are making videos. Um, people who work at the docks and uh, people who are on ships are making videos where you can hear firsthand what's going on. Um, I see some of those those people talking on social media and I don't really think they have a reason to lie. So, um, that's, that's kind of where I'm getting some of that information. And, and, uh, in closing, um, bread and yeast. If you have a friend who's making one of those regenerating yeasting breads, like Amish friendship bread, there was several of those running around during COVID, uh, that friends were exchanging. And we definitely jumped in on that and had a great time with it, had fresh bread almost every day. Um, which is awesome. You don't have to have yeast to make bread also. Um, but so, you know, you can still make bread without yeast. It just is kind of more like a tortilla, <laughs> but anyway, um, grab some yeast. Yeah, it's cheap. And if you know someone in your family who can make bread, you know, maybe practice a few times. It's a good family activity. We had a lot of fun with that when we were, um, locked down, shut down a year ago. Okay. That's all I have for you today. Quick video. Uh, just wanted to address some of those things and kind of dive deeper in that. We, we're going to keep going on this topic and, and keep talking about, you know, some quick tips on what to prep and what to buy. I love you guys' comments. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, make sure you're subscribed. Don't be one of the uh, 90% or whatever, 95% that are not subscribed. Um, hit that subscribe button and I'll see you on the next video. Eagle Run 2-3.